Well, good morning, Redemption family. My name is Russ Taylor, and I'm the student pastor associate here at our North Campus, and I'm excited to be able to gather with you this morning and, and dive into God's Word together. So if you have a Bible or a copy of Scripture, go ahead and open up to Romans chapter 8. We're going to be in verse 31. But before we dive into the text, I want to I want to pose a few questions to you. What are you fearful of right now? What circumstances in your life are, are causing you stress or worry? And what is it in your life that you feel like you have no control? You see, for me, uh, this time about a month ago, there was a lot of things in my life that seemed really, really certain. Uh, and just one month or a few weeks later, some of those things that were really certain now seem very, very uncertain. And, and when I begin to think this way, uh, it can a lot of times cause me to feel alone or hopeless. And I've been talking with a lot of people these past few weeks uh, during the midst of everything that's happening. And, and, and one thing is true, when, when crisis or pandemic hits, if you will, everybody reacts and responds differently. But one thread that I've seen to be held true in all situations is that Satan would love to lead us astray right now. You see, Satan would love to tempt us to believe that God is not in control. Or, or better yet, Satan would love for us to believe the lie that God is not who he says he is. And so what I want to do today is I want to take a moment to encourage you and remind you of who God is. And to do that, we must go into the Word of God, His holy and breathed out Word. And there's two things that I want to remind you of about who God is, two characteristics of God. The first one is that God is our provider. You see, in Romans chapter 8, up until this point, Paul has been writing to the church of Rome, and he has been making the comparison of their present sufferings and affirming them and encouraging them that, that these current sufferings are no comparison to the glory and riches they have in Christ Jesus. He points out how God's people have been groaning in the pains of childbirth, longing for their Savior to return. And in verse 31, it says this, What then shall we say in response to these things, to these sufferings? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things. I love Paul's use of rhetorical questions here. He's saying, Man, like, what shall we say to the God that is in control? And what is our response to these sufferings? If God is for us, who can stand against? And the temptation could be to believe that there are things that God doesn't have in his hand. But if he didn't spare his own son, how will he not even more give us graciously all that we need? You see, God's word is reminding us that he has provided for us all that we have and all that we need, and that he's going to continue to provide for us. It's reminding us that he is able to provide for us. And so for you right now, is it, is it financially? Is it your career? Is it the grace you need to make it throughout the day now that your whole family is at home together? But one thing is true. All that we have and all that we need has been provided to us by our Heavenly Father. And He is faithful to continue to provide for His glory. And you can rest and find comfort in the truth that God is our provider. But the greatest truth that, that I can give you about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is not only is, our, is He our provider, but He Himself is our provision. In verse 35 it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, the greatest crisis of all, the greatest pandemic of all, is that we were born into sin and separated from God. And God was the only one who could provide a way for us to have a relationship with him again. But not only was he the one who had to provide the way, 
God himself was the way. God himself is the way. He is the provision. See, God came in flesh to earth, and Jesus lived the life we were supposed to live and died the death that we deserve to die so that if me and if you repent and put our faith and trust in Jesus, that we can be saved and we can have a relationship with God again. You see, God is exactly who he promises us that he is. He is faithful to save. He's faithful to provide. So much so that he wouldn't even spare his only son. And so this morning, Redemption Church, be encouraged by that truth. That God is not withholding from his people. God has provided everything for us and will continue to provide over and over again.